Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Let's Design and 3D Print a Battleship Game. In this episode we're going to finish the designing process. We are basically done with the functionality but we still want to make this box a little bit more beautiful. Also we need to design all of the pieces, the ships and also the pins and I decided to also design a locking mechanism. That's what we need to do first. Before we open this up we need to have it in its closed state with the pins at their respective location and we're going to make a little S-clip that we can kind of snap into place. So I've been looking through all of these things a little bit and I saw something within the form generators. There was actually a clip, I believe, or maybe it was in the community form generators. I mean, look at all of that shebang. Look at what we can do, man, this is crazy. Yeah, there we go. There is an actual clip. Oh, this is great. I'm going to place this guy right here. We're probably gonna use two of those. They are perfect. Though this needs to be rotated the correct way around. Let's actually get this in place and we're going to make this considerably smaller. It's gonna be kind of hard to judge. Ah, no, and we actually have exact measurements for this. Ah, this is amazing. So let's uh, first of all get this more or less into place. And considering that the diameter of this thing right here is five millimeters, we want to have this approximately 0.4 millimeters bigger. So let's say we want a wall thickness of about two millimeters, then the internal diameter should be, let's see, uh, 5.4 I guess and 4 millimeter in width sounds actually okay now how does that look hmm this is not going to fit maybe this is actually more than 5 millimeters let me quickly ungroup one of those and we're going to check this is yeah it is 5 hmm let's make this a little bit bigger and see what approximately fits Okay, that already looks much better and we can increase the jaw length right there. Okay, I'm just going to assume this is the correct size. We duplicate this and bring it down. But we want to rotate this guy 180 degrees. And now we only have to make a piece in order to connect those. This is beautiful. I want them to be approximately 4 millimeters in width. I'm going to create a simple cube in order to connect those guys and I want this cube to be 4 millimeters as well. But it's gonna be a little bit thinner. Maybe let's do two. We're gonna bring it right there in between those two and we need to make sure that we can hook those guys up correctly. I don't want stuff to overlap but I still want them to be connected thoroughly. And that looks about right. So we're gonna select all three parts and hook them up. There we go. Now we have one single piece in order to kind of keep this box closed. Another thing I want to do is smooth out the edges a tiny little bit. So we're going to create a cube that is approximately 5 millimeter in height, but we're gonna make it long enough in order to cover the entire side and I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees. Now I'm not sure if there is a simpler way in order to actually get a nice edge. But that is just how we're gonna do it right now. So if I bring this up approximately one millimeter or so, maybe let's do one and a half if we can, if that is not too much. Doesn't seem too much, but if we take this away, I believe everything is gonna be much nicer. There we go. And since we did a 45 degree angle, we should still be able to print it. Now I'm going to repeat it for this side and the other side as well. And I want to make sure that we join up with this edge exactly. So let me quickly achieve that and then I'm going to be right back. Hmm, I don't seem to be able to get the perfect line. Even though I'm using the lowest snapping, I just can get higher or lower than what I already have. So that's a slight problem. Oh, I just see, I did something wrong here. That's why I can't do it. We have to undo a couple more times. I mean, if we look at it from this perspective, I cannot get it right to the place where I need it. It's either on the top or at the bottom. Let's try to shrink it maybe. No. Okay, too bad. There must be a better solution for that. But maybe for now, we're just gonna smooth out the top and the bottom of the front. So I would say this is about the same. This of course is not exactly measured, but it's still gonna be nicer to look at. 
Okay, that's good enough for the front. In the back, I'm just going to smooth out these two corners. That's what I'm gonna do right now. And after that, we're gonna create a little cap for these two things. We want to close this off and lock it tight. And there we go. I smoothed out the corners. I think it's more or less symmetrical. I tried to do my best, but let's create the caps now. If I remember correctly, this is a five by five square. So let's create one of those. I'm gonna bring this right up to where it needs to go. We gotta be a little bit more precise with our snapping. Let's go all the way down to 0.1. Okay, now I fit this exactly into the hole. I want to make this approximately one millimeter thick. So this should fit exactly in there. Beautiful. Now I want to make this a tight fit. So we're gonna take away just a little bit. Let's actually snap to 0.25. And I want to take away from the top. Actually, we want to do that twice. So we go down to 4.5. We bring this up one snap point. Gonna shorten this and this side as well. There we go. So now this is gonna be a quite tight fit and it's gonna seal this hole. But just in case I need to get it out again, I'm going to duplicate this bad boy and bring it right there. And this one we're gonna make a little bit bigger again. So we're gonna go back to five or maybe even more. Yeah, let's do 5.5, that should be good. But I want to make this a little bit thinner. The way we're gonna print this, this should be no problem. We print in 0.2 layer thickness. That means we should go maybe 0.4. Let me see, can we achieve that? 0.4, yeah, that is a very thin layer, but it's gonna be a nice cap. So we want to select both of these guys and melt them together. That is gonna be the piece that fits directly into here. Good, so I'm glad we got this out of the way. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for this piece as well, but of course with a cylinder. So give me a couple of minutes to achieve that and I'm gonna be right back. And there we go. We got the cap for the other side as well. That should be fine. I think it's... Is it symmetrical? I can't tell. It feels like this side is a little bit thinner. Yeah. Hmm. I just have to trust that this is going to be fine. Good, so now that we have that, let's get this a little bit out of the way, including this stick. We don't have to change anything with those guys. They are more or less ready to print and we can take care of the decoration inside the top part. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit and we're going to rotate this by 90 degrees. Now I'm gonna make myself another work plane using this tool because we want to do a couple of things right here. Okay, first thing I want to do is make a, a little decorative thing. Then we want to do maybe a compass and I'm just for the series gonna do a, a Nathan Sandbox logo. So let's have a look into the recommended form generators. I think we might be able to use one of those as a decoration. Then maybe some of those within the corners that could be good. Do we have a ring of some sorts? Let's see, maybe we can use a simple ring right here. The torus, hmm, I'm gonna go with the tube. Oh yeah, that's gonna make for a nice compass surrounding. Or maybe we even take the ring. How about the ring? Ah, no, the tube is better. Better for printing. Then I also want a couple of things on the compass. So let's see, maybe we get, yeah, look at that. We have a couple of landscapes. So I'm gonna go with the simple shapes. And then we also need like a picture frame. Let's see, there should be, yeah, the image generator. I'm gonna go with that guy. This guy is awesome. Let me actually get one of my logos in there. Um, and let's go with this guy. Nathan's sandbox. Look at this, it's beautiful. Okay, let's do the corner pieces first. I'm gonna do one millimeter snapping so we can get this in place properly. And I guess we are gonna make this a little bit smaller, maybe 10. And then the size is gonna be four. That's fine, four millimeters. Good, now we should be able to copy this over and we're gonna do that. I'm gonna rotate this like so. And now we should be able to copy it two more times and we just have to bring those guys into place. We're gonna bring them all the way down, I guess. There we go. Now the compass is gonna go on the top, I presume. So let's start maybe right here and we're gonna expand this all the way to there, I guess. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, this seems to be the same spot, but we have to make this considerably smaller. I want this to be four 
Let me see. We can print with 0.4 thickness, so maybe we're gonna make it 1.2 millimeters. There we go. That is much thinner. Is it thin enough? Yeah, I think so. Let's go ahead and place the landscapes within it. We need to make them a little bit smaller. Those are not gonna be printed very accurately, just because we're talking about less than millimeters in this case. I mean, check out all of that. That's just not gonna be possible at this size. But it still looks kind of like a radar, doesn't it? At least I hope so. Good. Then the Nathan's Sandbox logo we're gonna place right here. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger. Something like that. Beautiful. And in between, I would like to place this little decorative part. There we go. Looks about right. I want to make sure that I have two millimeters of space in between everything. Okay, now I'm not so sure about this part. This kind of doesn't fit in my opinion. Also, the thickness of this guy, how much is that? Maybe we go six, so we can clearly read everything. It would be nice if this logo actually worked out, you know? <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy one of those guys over and let's see if we can do something like that. Copy it over again and do that. This might be a nicer decoration. Yeah, I like that more. Good. The picture is also centered. This actually added up perfectly. I'm kind of surprised. But I think that's the way we're gonna do it. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's maybe select everything right here if we can. Yeah, there we go. And we're gonna group this together as well. Though I do want to give this some nice colors first. Let's go with black. I mean, it doesn't matter for the print. I just want it to look nice. Yeah, I'm actually gonna select everything, unselect this and then set it black. Great. Now we can group this together and hopefully end up with a beautiful top part of our battleship game. There we go. Let's get rid of the work plane by dragging another one into an empty space. Let me actually see if we can do that. Hmm, should be possible. There we go. Okay, are we happy with what we have here? We got a nice decoration, we got some space. We have the locking mechanism, we have the holes for the locking mechanism. Let's actually grab those guys and bring them over a little bit. So this is gonna be a print together with all of these things, I guess. And then we're gonna have a print for the bottom part and a print for the top part. Do we miss anything is the question. We thought of the angle we want this thing to stand on. Yeah, I think we got this. So let's go ahead and actually design the pins. The pins should be relatively easy, but maybe I find a nice form. For instance, one of those. They would be easy to grab, but this looks a little bit thin to print, to be honest. Yeah, let me actually design the pins and maybe also some of the ships off camera. I'm not going to do a massively awesome work on the ships. We're just going to make it, you know, functional and just slightly nice to look at, but it needs to be practical. We need to be able to actually stick pins into the ships. The ships need to be spaced out absolutely perfectly so we can stick them into the board. Yeah, so I'm gonna do some of that off camera and then I'm gonna come back to update you and maybe do some more work together. See ya in a second. And there we go, guys. We are back and I took myself the liberty of uh, doing some work. We have the basic shapes that we need for the ships, as you can see. However, they do not look like ships at all. Of course, that is something we can still fix more or less. Well, probably not easily, but we should be able to do something about it. And also right here, you can see an example of a pin. Now, the pins, well... They're gonna be hard to print. We will have to print them with supports if we do it like that. But I think we're kind of limited in this case, actually. The ships, I just need to make sure that these holes remain the same and also the pins on the bottom. But everything else we can basically influence. So I already set up the ships we need. Of course, I'm just gonna reshape one of those guys and then I'm gonna copy it over for the other one. But those are gonna be the sizes of the the ships we have for this game. I also did a little compartment right here so we have a little bit more space within that so stuff can actually also roll over to here. Let me actually see is this not a perfect line? It's kind of hard to judge if this is even. Usually it does get rid of the lines when you combine stuff but you know it still looks exact enough. Now I already exported this just to see how long it would take to print and I was kind of disappointed to figure out that the bottom part is gonna take approximately 12 hours and the top part approximately 10 hours to print. 
So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try to do something with a GoPro time-lapse feature, but it might not work out perfectly. However, the next episode is all about 3D printing this thing and you will have to give me a couple of days as I do not want to be out of the house while I'm printing. So I will have to do most of the stuff overnight probably, but I'm still kind of scared to just leave the house while the printer is running with a 200 degree nozzle. Now, let me see what we could do about the boats. I do want them to have the same basic shape for all of the boats. So we need to cut away a little bit. Oh man, that's not gonna be easy. What if we did something with those guys? Make this a little bit smaller. And then I guess we would want to cut away a little bit from here. So we want to make this as big as the ship itself, which is exactly 10. But we want to make this fairly narrow so it doesn't get in the way of the pins. How about that? That leaves us with half a millimeter of space before the pin. Okay, I actually kind of like that. Let's go ahead and expand this. And we want to duplicate this already, move this over, and then let's actually see how this looks if we just combine these two things. Oh, of course, I need to make this a whole object first. There we go. Now we cut away a little bit, and if we did this on both sides, it would already look much more like a boat, right? <laughs> so let me actually accomplish this for at least one of each of those. Maybe we actually get rid of the extra ones. I just did that in order to remember what kinds of boats we need. Now, if we are clever, we can actually get this perfectly lined up. So can I just move this right here? Make it a little bit longer and combine everything. Let me see, we're gonna test this out. Uh, combine all of those things, yes, but they are, yeah, they are now grouped together. That's not good. But what we can do is duplicate this guy and then we just take one of those, combine it with the first one and so on and so forth. Okay, there we go. I got the last ones to cut out. I know these designs are not very original, but that's something we can always redesign. I'm really eager to print by now, and I don't want to waste too much time on really designing these ships. I mean, we first have to check if this is even large enough for some detailed work. But one more thing I'm going to do is slice off this edge slightly so we can get a nicer border. This is a little too edgy. And after that, I'm probably gonna be already happy with these shapes. So let me quickly do that step and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, there we go. I finished smoothing up all of the shapes on the top. And if this is going to be a successful print, then I will consider, you know, reshaping these a little bit to look more like ships. But for now, that's gonna serve the purpose. Cool. So let's actually get those guys ready for print. I want to make sure that I space them out evenly. So approximately two millimeters apart from one another. And then we are gonna print them out in that fashion. So let's uh, copy those guys over. And the large boat we're gonna have have right there. Now we have to print these out in a specific color. I think I want to make two player colors. So maybe the first player could be yellow or maybe one could be blue. Yeah, maybe let's do them blue. So I'm gonna make an export. I'm gonna make sure that I select all of these. That's gonna be one single print. We're gonna export that. And of course we only want the selected ones and we want to export an STL file. Actually thinking about this, we might be able to adjust these shapes so that we don't have to use supports for these prints. I mean, that would be absolutely amazing. I really fear that for the pins, all hope is lost, except we make them in a shape like that. Maybe if we don't have such a humongous pin on the top, we would be able to accomplish that. Yeah, that is actually a good idea. You know what? Give me a couple of minutes to readjust all of these shapes to be printable without support. It's really important to me to do supportless prints. And since we are designing stuff ourselves, we can keep that in mind. So I'm gonna be right back. And back we are, guys. I decided to not change the shapes of the player ships because i it's just too complicated in this program to get this perfect. You know, I, I would love to just take this polygon, for instance, and make it smaller or reshape this. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of used to SketchUp, for instance, where you could do these things. But of course, this program also has its advantages because it's kind of easy to do all of these things that I've done. 
So we're gonna print these guys with support. I'm sure we're gonna succeed. However, we're also changing the shapes of the pins. So you can see now I made them in a way so it is actually possible to print it without supports. There are no big overhangs or anything of that nature. We will probably have to print it with a raft. But then right here I also have all of the extra items. These are the locking mechanism items. And then we of course also have the hinge extras. So these are going to be three print projects we're definitely going to do in the next episode. I'm not yet sure what I'm going to do about the 12 and 10 hour print. Let me know what you think of that. Should we really print this out? Is it going to be worth it? Do you see something that could go wrong? But yeah, the next time it's printing time. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye bye.